Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Token 2049. Thank you for the queue to make this happen. I am Walid, the CEO of Data Ownership Protocol, and we're gathered here today to discuss something about the token, uh, about the mainnet, the glimpse of a little mainnet, the key technologies behind it, what are making sure the mainnet is working as it's supposed to be, and some past accomplishments, some future goals. So, are you all excited? Yeah. Before going into the mainnet and its technologies, we need to know what is zero knowledge and why it's crucial for the technology. Basically, just like the term blockchain, like storing data in blocks, and all these blocks are connected to each other, and it forms a blockchain, Similarly, zero-knowledge terminology is also like a terminology of proving anything without revealing the key information to it. And when you implement a blockchain through cryptography, some programming, you get one type of blockchain. When you implement it again with another set of programming, you get one other. Similarly, when you make these step terminologies of zero-knowledge in a programmatic way, you get stocks, you get snarks. Before going into it further, like, why is the need of this technology? Why is the need for zero knowledge? The things are going well. Like, why is there a need to be zero knowledge in the blockchain, in the public blockchain? This may not be a problem for us, but when we onboard the next billion people, mass adoption does happen, which everybody is trying to onboard, right? Then. There comes an issue of over-transparency, like imagine a merchant or imagine a vendor like paying his payments, or imagine you at the supermarket buying a loaf of bread and you know that the cashier or the counterparty, when you interact with him, he has your public address, he has your wallet address, and he can look inside your wallet, find all your financial history, what you bought, what you did, where you swapped, what you landed, what you, landed, what you borrowed. It's not a good thing. It's over transparency and we think it's not a feature, it's a bug. Where do we go from here? We go from here to data ownership protocol. We are making sure this problem gets solved for the people in an easy way and in a secure way. So now let's understand a little how zero knowledge works, how these proofs are work. When, let's imagine user A needs to interact with user B. So he needs two entities. One is a prover entity, one is the verifier entity. And the prover can be anything. Like, it can be a trusted person, it can be a machine, and it can even be a set of programmatic code. Now the prover takes some information of this. Let's say you want to prove a real estate document, but without revealing the core information of that document. There's a machine, it scans it, and it tells the other person or the verifier that this document is legit, it's true, it's not false, and the verifier believes it, and you convey that you are a specific owner of that real estate without revealing the information, the, let's say the amount or its value and everything. We dope are utilizing Snark's methodology for the data ownership protocol. What we do, that when the data begins to exist in the system, we hash that data, we form it like a note, store it in a smart contract in a Merkle tree. And why the Merkle tree? Because it's easy, you get a root, and it's easy to verify whether the data is good or not. And the thing about hashes is that you can put an entire book into a cryptographic algorithm and you get a hash. And that hash will remain the same forever. Every time you put that book into the same algorithm, it will give you the same hash. But even if a comma in that book is changed, the hash will change. So instead of storing the entire book, you can store that hash, and whenever you are presented with that book, and you want to see whether the book is changed or not, you just run it through the same algorithm, match it with the hash, and you know this book is not changed. This is also the 101 class of blockchain, you know, blocks, they store its previous block hash. And how do they make it secure? Whenever a block is changed, its hash changes. And its next block tells to the blockchain that the hash I have of the previous block is not the same anymore. So we know there is an issue in the blockchain. And this way, we hash these values into the system. 
We use a circuit. It's also a programmable code. This data goes into the circuit. Your private inputs are always on your system, on your front end. The prover generates a proof. The proof goes to the contract, the verifier. The verifier accepts it, makes the transaction without revealing your balances, your other assets, your identity, and even the recipient identity. Now discussing where we stand, and all this may sound like simple and easy to you, but believe me, it isn't. So that's why we are under security audit by Hacken, and one of the leading companies in auditing, and we are hoping to hear from them soon, the audit report, and it's currently in under audit. And before that, we had a private sale, it was a success. We also had some polls from the community. And after all that, the token claim is in process. We currently have more than 130,000 people already claimed, already. <laughs> we have 130,000 holders on the Ethereum public blockchain, making us one of the biggest community on the Ethereum public blockchain. And before that, we also wanted to take feedback from the community, from the people, of how they want this thing to be intended to be done, how smooth they want the user experience to be. So we launched the testnet also. And we were proud, yet in a humble way, to announce and to have that, to, that 2.6 million, more than 2.6 million people joined our testnet. Thank you guys for having this massive impact on the market and joining us, and they were from over 200 different countries, resulting in more than 5 million transactions on the blockchain, on the test blockchain, on the Sepolia blockchain of Ethereum network. <coughs> now discussing the future, like these are the past accomplishments, where we go from here. Now as our protocol, as our technology is under audit, we are hoping to launch the mainnet in a coming few weeks, and soon after that, we are launching to the token to one of the tier one exchanges and making sure it's best for the community. The token is more liquid, it's more tradable. And after that, we are also want to have integrations with other protocols, with wallets, for the, people, for the ease of people. Because the people are already familiar with these things, so they shouldn't be able to go again. They should be able to use our protocol with other protocols also, like other dApps also, other wallets also. And in quarter three, we are planning to launch this internal ecosystem for the end people to use. Now comes to the point, what is actually happening in the mainnet? And before that, there is a little glimpse of the mainnet video. I want to show you how the mainnet looks like. Please enjoy. It's a one minute video. It won't take a lot of your time. Have a look. Here's how you can be in control of your financial data visibility on the Ethereum blockchain with DOP. Begin by creating a new DOP wallet and connecting your main wallet right after. Now, you're ready to use DOP. Whenever you wish to encrypt your assets, select your desired holdings from your main wallet and the amount you wish to encrypt. And with a click of a button, you've successfully encrypted your tokens. Transfer assets between DOP wallets to keep the information under control. Only you and the receiver can see the assets sent within the protocol. No one else. You can decrypt encrypted assets by returning the tokens to your wallet or any other Ethereum wallet. Yes, it is that easy to surpass over transparency. And with the addition of various user badges rewarding your activity, DOP guarantees that your journey to data ownership will be enjoyable and valuable. Time to become the owner of your on-chain financial data exposure. DOP. Your data. Your choice. Just as you saw the video, there are three currently main aspects of the mainnet launch. Encrypt, send, decrypt. And encrypt you can understand as your gateway into the system. You're on the public blockchain, you're on the Ethereum blockchain, your data is public. You use the encrypt gateway to get into the system where the system takes your information, takes your data, takes your funds, store it in a safe place, and hash that data and store it. Now you can easily use the send feature to interact inside the protocol freely without worrying about your data being compromised, without your assets being compromised, and without your identity being compromised, people being able to look into your wallet and seeing. 
then if you want to take this data, take these funds, take these currency balances out of the system, you use the decrypt feature where we in the protocol burn your data inside the protocol, gave you that exact funds, that exact data onto the public blockchain, and you are out of the system. Now, after this, the plans for is that when you are inside the system, when you are inside the DOP protocol, transacting freely without worrying, there will be ability for the users to generate special proofs to make sure other, if they want other people to know that they have a certain balance or they have a certain tokens. Let's imagine you have 20 tokens or currencies in your, in your protocol, in your wallet, and you want to prove that you hold certain tokens so you can easily generate a proof, let the person know that you hold these tokens and without revealing all the other currencies. And similarly, let's say you, can, you want to reveal a certain balance that you hold over a million USDT, but you don't want to reveal that you also hold more than 100 million Pepe. You're a meme coin lover, so you hold the 100 million Pepe, but you don't want that to reveal. So you can generate a proof only proving that you have a million USDT without revealing any other balances. And similarly, in the future, you will be able to make NFTs visible, encrypt them, and also generate proofs on top of NFTs that you hope and have a selective collection. And you don't want a person to know that you want have all other collections, but you want to prove that you have a punk, but not being able to let him see that you have a bore ball. So, so you can prove only certain NFT without hiding, with hiding and privatizing your all other NFT balances. And all this will be available on the dope scan where people will have public profiles and they will choose what data they want for the public to see and what data they want for the public to not see. Now, people in the past have made these kinds of protocol already, right? They, there has been a past protocols, people trying to achieve this, and what are our advantages over them? The first point is that basically people try to be public or people try to be completely anonymous. We don't try to be either zero or either 100, but we give our users this choice. They want to be a selective privacy method. They want to have this, that whether they want to, sub, sub, some things they want to be public, some things they want to be private. They decide what they want other people to see, what they want other people to not see. Second point is we are regulatory compliance. We are making sure that like fights with countries and authorities is never a good idea. So we are making sure that we are regulatory compliance. We have a partnership with Chain Analysis to make sure every wallet that interacts with the system when getting in is not a malicious actor, is not involved in any malicious activity, legal activity, and only then he can get into the system. And if he is involved in a malicious activity, he is not allowed and he is stopped from using the protocol. The next aspect is user experience. The blockchain, the Web3 world is already very complicated. Like with the wallets, public keys, private keys, transaction, gas fees, mining, it's already too much to grasp. A new user has already his hands full, his mind is already complicated enough, and he needs a smooth experience. And right now in the market, we don't have that much smooth experiences. People build things assuming that the user will be a developer or user has sufficient knowledge of the system. We at Dope target that anybody with a Web3 wallet and the ability to read can use the system with ease. Now, where do we go from here? What is the future? We think that data ownership will revolutionize the future of data. With RWAs and mass adoption, any kind of digital data can be onboarded with us, can be secured with us without worrying to that your data will be leaked or compromised, even medical certificates, or even data which the AI models are used to train on. And even if the real estate tokenization happens, you can also store that information on chain without revealing what assets or what real estates you own and only revealing particular for the particular person. This is zero knowledge proofs with data ownership protocol. I hope this proof is verified and uh, we are good, and if you think this proof is verified, give me a clap so I know that you understand what I said.
And before con concluding this, getting to the end, I have a surprise for you. I would like to invite CEO of Bitcoin.com, Corbin Fraser, on the stage for an. Walid, Walid, how are you? So uh, yeah, as Walid said, I'm the CEO of Bitcoin.com. Now, Bitcoin.com is a fully self-custodial wallet. We've been around since 2017. Over 50 million wallets created. We're translated into over 24 different languages. We're supported around the world. We're one of the largest fiat to crypto on-ramps. And we're very excited to announce a partnership between DOP and Bitcoin.com for bringing. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. So DOP, we're very excited. I think for us, it's like data ownership. You own your seeds and you control what you put out there on the public blockchain. And I think what, what the team at DOP has built, it's monumental. It's, it's what is the next phase of crypto, crypto adoption, crypto utility. So we're extremely excited to support this at Bitcoin.com. We can't wait to get this release out. So uh, we're excited to get out there. Let's, let's take it. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for having us. Enjoy it.